Okay, good morning. Sorry I can't be there today, but stop screwing around and uh, get to work. Uh, so here we go. First off, I'm going to ask you to, uh, on your half sheet, or your, I'm sorry, your scratch paper that you have in front of you, we simplify each of these radicals, please. Go ahead and pause the video now. Um, take a little time to do this, and we'll come back. Pause. All right, welcome back. Uh, so remember, we have this antiquated um, rule that we're going to keep these radicals out of the denominator. So on this case, I'm going to multiply by this version of 1. That's 1, right? So I don't change the value of it, but I change the form. 5 times root 7, we can write like this. Root 7 times root 7 is 7. So we can write it like that. Uh, on this next one, I've got that root 10 in the, in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by this version of 1. And again, I'm doing that to get rid of the radical. So up top, I have 6 root 10. Root 10 times root 10 is 10. And that feels good, but notice I have this 6 tenths. So I can reduce that to 3 fifths, still square root of 10. All right, next one, square root of 75. Uh, with square roots, to simplify them, I want to take as much of the, um, the squaring out as I can. And I notice that 75 has a perfect square in it, 25. This is 25 times 3. So that's the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, which is 5 root 3. Okay, and then this last one, 10 over square root of 8. Uh, I'm going to simplify this bottom first. Square root of 8. Ah! Square root of 8 is square root of 4 times 2. Square root of 4 times square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 root 2. So I have 10 over 2 root 2. Uh, 10, over two 10 over 2 is 5. So I have 5 over root 2. And let's get that radical out of there multiplied by this version of 1. 5 root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2. So, and if you multiply by root 8 by root 8 by root 8 over at first, uh, you could you could work your way to this. You could get there by reducing later. It just felt like less work to go that route for me. Okay. So we have been working with uh, these functions, these trig functions, just a little bit. And we're going to start to bust out of that triangle a little bit here. And so we had this. So like, let's say that this was the point 3, 4. And we wanted to find all the trig functions of this angle. It's right here. Now, if that's the point 3, 4, we talked about this last time. That means that you're going over 3, up 4, and we have a right triangle. You can get that uh, hypotenuse, that side length, with the Pythagorean theorem, and you're on your way. Notice, I can kind of think the same thing here. If I go over x and up y, in this case, x would be negative. This would be like the point um, negative 3, 4. So I've got this x value, which I'm going to call negative 3, and this, which is 4. That is still going to be a length of 5. I can still get there by uh, Pythagorean theorem. Square root of this side squared plus that side squared. So now what happens is I've got this angle outside here. I can talk about all the trig functions of it. So if I am like looking at these cases, so this one, if I sketch it, that point 3, 4 has a width of 3, height of 4. There's my angle. I know that this is 5 from Pythagorean theorem. And I've got, you know, sine, cosine, tangent. And I can still think of sides that are opposite over hypotenuse. There's my so, Katoa, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Opposite over adjacent. That is an ugly looking five. Uh, and then these are those reciprocals. So this would be five fourths. This is three fifths. This would be five thirds. This is four thirds. This would be three fourths. Pretty good. But now notice what's happening here. If I talk about the point three, negative four, that's here. So I went over three, but then I went down four. So now what's happening is I'm getting some direction in my values, right? It, it's not just always over, up. Now it's over, down. And my angle is always from zero degrees. My angle is actually this rotation here. So notice like my angle is outside of it. 
That side looks still 5. Uh, that radius is always going to be positive because I'm getting it up Pythagorean theorem and I square root it to get there. But what I want you to notice, sorry, I want to adjust this and get it back. But what I want you to notice now is that my uh, side length here is signed. It has a certain sign on it. So what it does is it still takes this sine, cosine, tangent, all these, and sine. Now I'm, I'm still, I'm going to center myself at zero, zero here. Opposite is going to be negative four. So negative four over five. So now notice I'm going to have uh, like positive negative. I'm going to have signed values here. Cosine adjacent over three over five. Tangent negative four. Opposite over adjacent negative four over three. And then I could get my cosecant, secant, cotangent. And notice with this one, the negative three, negative four, that would be here. There's my angle, my rotation. Think of this out here as zero degrees, and I'm rotating this way, always. So my rotations go like this. So I've rotated, I terminated there. There's my triangle. I'm always going to make my triangle by rooting back down to the x-axis. Right, wherever my point is at, I'm going to go straight down or straight up to the x-axis to make my triangle. So my, ang my right angle's outside here. It's not like in at, at where the origin is. That's where my right triangle is. And notice I went over 3, down 4. That's still 5. And then I can just still plug in those values. So sine would be, uh, let's think, opposite, negative 4 over 5. Cosine, that's where I'm centering myself, adjacent, negative 3 over 5. And tangent, opposite over adjacent. Notice it's negative 4 over negative 3, so that's 4 thirds, and negative divided by a negative is positive. Now, this whole idea of like opposite um, adjacent starts to get a little hazy, so let's redefine some of these. So I'm going to have, put it here, I'm going to have some rotation to some xy. And then I'm going to call this R. I'm going to call this a radius. Because what our thinking is, is we have this radius, this length, and it's rotating to that point. And then we have some angle theta. And I just happen to put this in the second quadrant here. Remember, quadrants are numbered first, second. I put this in the second quadrant. This could be in any quadrant. So I'm going to define sine and cosine in terms of x, y, and r. So sine of the angle. Well, if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, remember the side's x, left, right is x, up, down is y. That's huge. Keep that. Left, right is x, up, down is y. Um, opposite over hypotenuse, that would be y over r. Cosine, adjacent, x over r. And tangent, opposite over adjacent, y over x. A couple things I want you to start to associate with. Associate sine with up and down. See how sine goes with y up and down. Associate cosine with left, right. Cosine is x over r. Gives it that ratio. Um, not mathy, coincidental, but if you alphabetize x, y, alphabetize cosine, sine, they match up, right? X comes before y, c comes before s. Again, not mathy, coincidental, but convenient. If sine is y over r, Cosecant is r over y. Secant's the reciprocal of this, r over x. Tangent's the reciprocal of this, x over y. Hey, one other thing I want you to start thinking about tangent is sometimes called the slope function. The slope function, steepness, dcy. Slopes change in y over change in x, y over x. So this, the tangent in this setting tells us how steep the line is. Okay, it's kind of cool. In calculus, we have uh, something that's called a tangent line, which is the line of steepness. I'm going to try and grab all that. I don't know that I got it all. So at this point, what I'd like you to do, at this point, pause the video, go through these three, and get solutions for them all. I'll come back 
uh, in a minute and display some solutions, you can check them. Oh, welcome back. Hey, um, in this unit, we're gonna do a lot of sketching. So if I think about actually the rest of the semester, uh, being able to draw the picture is huge. So as I look at these, I'm gonna think about that point, negative two, negative five, where is it? So negative two, back two, down five, it's about here. My angle always starts at zero, comes around. So there's my rotation. And then notice here's my, here's what I can use as my triangle. My width is negative two, right? Over two, down five. And so then now I need that R value too. I need that, I need that radius. So square root of negative two squared plus negative five squared. Now, if you're doing this on your calculator, make sure you're putting the negative inside the parentheses. Because um, otherwise, when you square this, when you go negative two, if you go negative two squared, it'll say negative four. Not correct. So this is four plus 25, which is the square root of 29. So whoop, that is the square root of 29. So when we do our sine cosine tangent, notice sine is y over x. So sine be negative five over root 29 which you simplify to negative five root 29 over 29. And I'll get the other answers up here too. Cosine adjacent or y, I'm sorry, x over r, so negative two over root 29. Tangent is uh, y over x, so negative five over negative two, which is five halves. And then reciprocals. Now. If I flip this one, I'm gonna to have to get that 29 out of the denominator. And so I'm gonna go back to this one to flip it, and that'll just put that radical in the denominator. So negative root 29 over five. Same thing here, I'm gonna go back and flip this one. Negative root 29 over two, and I can just flip that, two fifths. So there's my answer for that first one. Um, here comes the next one. So I could sketch it, six, negative nine, that's over six, down nine, wherever it is, it's in this fourth quadrant, that's what's, that's what's important. There's my angle, All right? There's my rotation. So if I drop this down, notice my, my x value is six, my y value is negative nine. Um, I can get this with my Pythagorean theorem, square root of six squared plus negative nine squared. is the square root of 117. I don't think there's any squares in that. That's divisible by three. So let's see, 117 divided by three, 39. Oh, it's divisible by nine. 117 divided by nine is 13. Okay, so that is nine times 13, which is three root 13. There it is. Okay, so I'll get my sine, cosine, tangent, all that. So sine is y, right? It's associated with those y values. So let's see, that would be negative nine over three root 13. Let's do some simplifying. Negative nine divided by three is negative three. So this is negative three over root 13. Get that radical out of the denominator by multiplying by this version of one. Negative three root 13 over three. Cool, cosine is width. Cosine is right adjacent or X over R or hypotenuse. So six over three root 13. Same sort of game, right? Six divided by three is two. Multiply by root 13 over 13, you get this beautiful thing. And tangent, y over x, it's the slope, negative 9 sixths, which simplifies to negative 3 halves. Okay, so there's my sine, cosine, tangent. And if I go to get my reciprocals, cotangent, that just flips to negative 2 thirds secant again i can flip it here but i'm i'm pushing that radical to the bottom and just making trouble for myself so i'm going to flip it from here 
right? Take the reciprocal of that. Just less work for me, and I am the laziest of the lazies. Uh, same thing here. I'm going to go back and flip this one. What's great about what we've just done by redefining this is now we have, we're not just stuck in little triangles, we have direction, right? We can end up in quadrant two, we can end up in quadrant three, and we can we can make some sense of things like co, what's cosine of something bigger than 90 degrees? We, we can go cosine at least up to 360, maybe even more, because we can keep going around and around. We can always make these triangles and always use these relationships to get there. Um, and this next one, the 724, uh, you sketch it out. It's back seven, down 24, so it's somewhere over here. And there's my angle right there, bigger than 180. And that I think that ends up being a 25. You're on your way. You can get there, get there from there. Okay, important. Uh, sine equals 8 seventeenths. What do you know? I'm going to pause it. I want you to talk about it. I'm going to drink my coffee while you do that. Don't bother me. I'm drinking. Pause. Ah. All right. Um, sine. So if we're if we're stuck in triangles, we can say if sine is this, we have opposite over hypotenuse, um, and that's what we know. And we can figure out how big the adjacent side is using Pythagorean theorem. Sketch it out. But remember, we've expanded this out. What we know right now is that we have some ratio of the x value to the r value, right? So when x is 8, r is 17. So let's think about that. So when x is 8, so when we're out here at 8, we have this radius that's 17 that's been, that's been like rotated. So somewhere in here, we could shove in a 17 that would terminate there. And look at that straight line. But the thing is, we don't know anything about why. I mean, we can we can start to say some things about why, like we could figure out how high it is. But notice, if we keep rotating this, rotating this around, it could be here as well, right? Not drawn to scale, but notice that uh, y, our y value could be positive or it could be negative. So this, we could get the magnitude or the size of y, but we don't have enough information to get the direction of y in this case, right? This angle here and this angle here, I'll call this the first theta, I'll call this the second theta, um, have, are, have basically the same sign value, right? Like they have the same ratio of x to y, x to r. So with that in mind, we would need more information than just this to pin down what quadrant we're in. So if I was going to ask you to do this sort of thing again, but just giving you some sine or cosine information, notice I would say the tangent is negative 12 fifths and it terminates in the second quadrant. Like if I don't tell you this terminates in the second quadrant, tangent is opposite over adjacent, y over x. I'm telling you the y value um, to the x value, its ratio is negative 12 to 5. So notice that could be uh, over 5, down 12. Or it could be back 5, up 12. Right? It could be this rotation, or it could be that rotation. It could be either one. So without, without this information, I'm either in quadrant 2 or quadrant 4. But then now that I tell you that, oh, okay, that, that explains it. It's got to be here. Then from here, I can use Pythagorean theorem to get R, find all my other trig functions. Same thing here. Sine is negative 3 over 7. Sine is Y, height, over R. Right? Without telling you it's in quadrant 3, I know my Y value is negative 3, so I know it's going down. Right, so it's at a height of negative three, and then it has a width of seven. So it could be here, or it could be here. Right, it could be that rotation, or it could be that rotation. But if I tell you it's in quadrant three, I know it's got to be this one, or that's seven, 
that's negative 3. Again, I can use Pythagorean theorem to get my y value, and I'm on my way. All right. Hey, that is good, good stuff. Um, I'm going to put this back up. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there it is again. Look at that. How many times should I? Um, you can free screen or make sure that you have that jotted down, um, that sort of thing. Um, the handout that you're going to get today, um, it is, you're going to need a separate sheet of paper to work on it. I know you, that's not what we usually do, but that is what we're doing today. Um, thanks for being flexible. Well, I'll have to be gone today. I appreciate it. And uh, get to work on this. Remember, we're baseline, right? Like this is stuff we need to know and have down cold. So get that, get that practice in. And I'll, uh, I'll see you later.